Good morning, Mayor and Council. Uh, Jason Fairbrush, uh, Director of Public Transportation and Parking. Um, so what we have here this morning is a presentation uh, to wrap up a downtown parking study that uh, we as staff have been uh, working on really uh, since April of uh, 2019. Um, <clears throat> we have uh, Brett Wood, a consultant from Kimley Horn, that's gonna do a presentation and provide you with some of the results and the processes we used in the study. Uh, but I did wanna um, acknowledge all the uh, cooperation and um, assistance that we received from our stakeholders. We had a steering committee that helped us um, with this downtown parking study. Um, we relied on a lot of city departments, such as Public Works, uh, Traffic Division, the Planning Department, uh, other partners such as the Alliance and Downtown OKC. So we do feel like we uh, uh, really uh, were able to reach out and get a, get a lot of uh, collaboration with uh, those that would uh, be able to contribute the most to the study. So with that, I'll turn it over to uh, Mr. Wood. Thank you, Jason. Thank you, members of the council, Mr. Mayor, uh, for having us here today to go over the results of the, the study. Um, before I start and, and launch into kind of what we learned and, and who we talked to, uh, I did want to just point out the, the boundaries of the study, uh, which is largely the downtown central business district bounded by um, I-235 on the east, uh, Classen on the west, the boulevard on the south, and 13th Street on the north. I mean, I would also like to echo from Jason's comments. I, I think part of the reason this, this study has gone so smoothly um, and has been, been moderately successful through the planning phase um, is the inclusion of, of those folks from city departments like traffic and planning and the inclusion of the Alliance and inclusion of downtown OKC and the outreach that we've conducted um, with the different districts in the downtown, uh, district boards, business owners, uh, various members of the council. We spoke to you as part of this process. Um, and so it's been a very inclusive process that helped us uncover what are some of the perceptions about parking um, and create strategies built around what the community needs to continue to grow. So within the uh, presentation today, I'm gonna go over pretty briefly about what the process was and, and how we undertook the, the study for the last 10 months. Um, a little bit about what we learned and some of the interesting facts about parking in downtown Oklahoma City. Um, talk about the parking management recommendations and, and the tools that we've provided to the city and COTPA and the, and the parking management entity here in the community. And then some of the primary recommendations that we see for initial phases of the implementation process. So at the outset of this process, we met with the steering committee and developed a set of goals and objectives. And you can see the, the first goal was largely to uh, implement or create a uh, open and inclusive process with area stakeholders and, and we did that again through open houses town halls focus group meetings a survey that we conducted throughout the community to generate information about how people use and perceive the parking program another goal was to balance on street and off street parking demands so the the system includes city owned parking facilities the parking decks that you have largely in the city center and, and throughout the arts district as well as private parking um, that, that is throughout the downtown community, and the on-street system, which includes a mix of metered parking, free and unregulated parking, uh, largely unstriped parking areas that's kind of uh, a free-for-all uh, in certain parts of the community. Uh, we wanted to come out of this process with improved parking management policies and procedures, so things like technology, real-time parking information, uh, improvements to payment options, uh, decision-making structures that help uh, demystify implementing new parking management strategies and make it a more transparent process. And then look at opportunities to create revenue streams to support investment in the parking program, investment in the community, uh, investment in mobility strategies um, that help to alleviate some of the parking demand as the community grows. So again, this is the study area, but I, I do want to point out that as we went through this process, we found it very important to look at not only the study area as a whole, but to look at each of the individual districts within the study area. And within the report that we've given to COTPA and the city, uh, there are recommendations for the entirety of downtown. And then there are specific recommendations for the different districts like Automobile Alley, Midtown, Bricktown, Deep Deuce, Arts District, that all have their own unique context. Um, and then a little bit about our process, we take a three-phase process when we do these types of studies. So the first is really defining what the issues are, and we do that through data collection, data analytics, 
We also do that through intensive outreach uh, surveys, talking to people, uh, the intersection of real data, what we see in the parking system, and what we hear from the community is often where we need to be to find the right set of strategies to improve parking and help it be a catalyst for community growth. The second phase is the diagnosis phase. So we begin to look at what those problems were from the initial phase, as well as what the future holds for the community and how parking management strategies, technologies, tools can be used to help the community achieve its vision. And then the last phase is the treatment phase where we define recommendations, implementation strategies, uh, and a roadmap for the city to move forward with parking management solutions. So a little bit about what we learned in the process. Uh, there were some interesting, interesting uh, nuggets we uncovered. Um, we, we started with the analytical side of things. So what is the parking occupancy within the study area? And this map is, is highly cluttered, but it shows a distinction of underutilized facilities, which would be the green or the yellow shapes. Uh, and then facilities that are you know, at utilization goals or above utilization goals, the orange or the red shapes. And you can see just from a cursory look at the map, there's a lot of green on this map. And one of the things we found was there's a lot of parking capacity within the system when you consider public and private parking. Uh, the public part of the system certainly had places where it was at high demand. But as we look at private parking facilities that have been built for businesses over time in downtown, a lot of them were overbuilt to non-urban standards um, and are seeing a, a, wide array, a wide array of available spaces throughout the community. And in fact, when we look at the results of that summarized numerically, um, paid on street throughout the community was about 52% occupied and certainly higher in places. Uh, free on street was about 40% occupied and, and that's a combination of both marked spaces and unmarked spaces. Um, the public parking system was about 40% occupied, um, and there were certainly facilities that were higher, and there were some that were lower. Uh, but you look at those private parking, the last two uh, blocks in, in the diagram there, both were about 36 and 38% occupied, and they make up some 30,000 parking spaces within the system. So overall, parking system was about 36% occupied during peak conditions. So when we look at the system and think about should we build more parking or should we find ways to be more creative about the ways we use parking, we certainly lean to the second and say, let's find creative ways to utilize parking going forward. And just a few of the, the numbers that we've presented to the steering committee and, and some of the stakeholders. So the, the downtown area is about 1,200 acres. Uh, about 256 of those acres are parking. And, and that doesn't include multi-level decks, just the footprint of the parking. So roughly a quarter of the downtown is, is made up of parking lots or decks. Um, there are roughly 37,000 off-street parking spaces and at peak conditions, roughly 23,000 of those sat empty. Uh, and again, most of those are in the private parking facilities, decks, surface lots throughout the community. Put in massing numbers, that's about 186 acres of unused parking in the downtown, uh, or about 141 football fields, if you laid it out, of unused parking at peak conditions. So the takeaways from those analytics and from what we heard from the community, the surveys, the stakeholder outreach was, first, off-street parking is heavily underutilized and overbuilt by the private sector. And so as we think about development in the downtown moving forward, we definitely need to think about right-sizing the way we apply parking to those developments, and we ought to think about creative ways to use that underutilized parking to continue to grow in places like Automobile Alley and Midtown. Um, on-street parking has very dynamic demand needs. Uh, the city center's uh, on-street parking is uniquely different than Bricktown, where they have different types of parking demands and times of day of parking demands. And so the one-size-fits-all policy that we have today should probably be amended to create dynamic operational strategies for different areas. We heard from stakeholders consistently from all of the districts that enforcement feels inconsistent. Um, there are people on Broadway, for example, who will park and stay there all day in on-street spaces, providing more consistent enforcement, creates turnover of those spaces, balances the demand between on-street and off-street, short-term and long-term, and creates better access for business. And that's throughout the study area. 
Uh, the parking management, there's still some room to modernize it. You've come a long way over the last five or six years since I've been working in the community with your technology and your approach to the way you, you manage parking. But there are opportunities to continue to grow uh, and, and implement best management practices. Uh, and then when we think about the districts and neighborhoods, we definitely have to have different strategies and different plans when it comes to all of those. And then finally, parking and mobility really should be intertwined. You've made a lot of investments in mobility in the downtown with streetcar, with bike share. Um, you've got micro mobility options that are popping up everywhere. And so leveraging those tools to help people get into and around downtown and create uh, viable walking and cycling paths, uh, improving sidewalks, those types of things will certainly help to balance parking demand as it's generated in the downtown. So some primary recommendations that came out of this, this study. Um, and there are, there are a number, we've got a, a roughly 120 page report that, that COTPA and the city have that outline parking management strategies, but we've picked out the top few that we wanted to share with you today. So the first is the concept of shared parking. And, and if you've heard shared parking, and, and um, it's been brought up today in the council chambers, the idea of shared parking is two businesses sharing a parking lot. Traditionally, in the sense of a, a mixed use development, many businesses have different peaks and they can share parking lots. We are beginning to see that evolve in the municipal world where shared parking is becoming a concept where cities or parking authorities are partnering with the private sector to create what appears to be public parking space without paying for the construction of additional public parking space. And during the process of this study, we brought in a couple of experts who have seen this in other communities, one that manages it in Tempe, Arizona, one who has helped implement it in Sacramento, California, where the city and the parking authority have gone out and assumed the role of the parking operator. So instead of you know an Ace Parking or Bob's Parking, it's COTPA going out and managing off-street parking and leveraging a partnership with the private sector to create the look and feel of public parking. Um, and there's, there's, it goes a long way to have it branded and look and feel like it's city parking to um, ease some of the concerns of the patron and, and make it seem like a simpler system. And then you can add in marketing and branding and education about how to get to those. The other beauty is there's a revenue share. So if you implement paid parking in some of those lots, there's a revenue share between COTPA and the private operator or private property owner. Um, it's, it's not easy to implement this type of strategy because there's always some leeriness on the uh, end of the parking opera or uh, property owner. But we've seen in those communities, Sacramento and Tempe, doing small scale pilots to start this off and evaluating the success of that and then, and then marketing the success of that to the private uh, property owner community. You're able to, to snowball this effort uh, and create more of a parking system, public parking system without building spaces. And I, I think that's critically important when we think about what transportation may look like in five to 10 years as more and more people think about transit, more and more people are adopting micromobility as a, a viable uh, mode of transportation and autonomous vehicles get closer and closer. We, we have to think about other ways to create parking without building it because it's very expensive to build as you've probably seen in the past few years and we don't want you in a situation where you're building parking and paying debt service on something that's declining in use. Another primary um, consideration is improving enforcement options. Again, we consistently heard this from all of the districts that a more consistent um, and, and visual approach to enforcement that creates turnover would help businesses at street level and balance parking assets throughout the, the community. Um, and so we've seen programs provide this consistent and modern and effective enforcement approach where they go from being a regulatory agency to more of an ambassador type of, of parking system. They leverage technology. You've got license plate recognition technology that you've invested in. So leveraging that to be more efficient with enforcement covering the areas, thinking about enforcement hours that are conditioned to the, to the districts that they're serving. So Bricktown, for example, perhaps we should enforce later into the evening and maybe not so much in the morning since most of the demand is occurring at night for restaurants, nightlife, events in that area. Uh, and so this consistent approach will allow for a better responsiveness to the districts. Uh, one of the other things we're seeing is bringing everything under one organization tends to be a more consistent approach to manage parking. And so one of the things we've recommended is for COTPA to continue to evaluate where enforcement should be and what that looks like in the coming years. 
One of the things we also heard pretty strongly from stakeholders was the concept of a parking benefit district. So we're seeing this get more traction uh, in communities throughout the U.S. But essentially, if we're implementing paid parking in a place where it's not been before, or we're implementing paid parking adjacent to a commercial district that may have residential, uh, multifamily, whatever it may be, the intent with a parking benefit district would be to reinvest some of the revenues that are generated by that district into the district for things like parking improvements, mobility improvements, sidewalk improvements, um, creating streetscape aesthetics, just general reinvestment for the improvement of the district. And some examples we gave to the committee were Austin, Texas, Houston, Texas, who take a portion of the revenue above and beyond the operating cost to manage that parking and reinvest it. Um, and so we think this is something that should be evaluated in a few years. Uh, we're recommending implementing paid parking in some places where we haven't had it before. We're recommending raising rates in places where you've had paid parking for a while. And so evaluating the impacts of that revenue generation and the ability to share that revenue with districts um, and the scale at which you would do it is something that, you know, a few years from now, COTPA and the city should, should reevaluate. Uh, and then data-driven policies to support balanced utilization. That's a lot of words to basically say, look at how the system is performing and set policy and practice based on that. So if one area has really high demand for on-street parking in a paid area and another area two blocks away has much lower demand, we're seeing cities throughout the U.S. now set price based on that demand. So it may be higher in the high demand areas and lower in others. I, I did a study for the city of Seattle about 10 years ago and they implemented this type of program and it's been highly effective at creating equitable options for people. They can park a couple of blocks away and, and pay half the price. It's also balanced demand because in those places where they raise the price, people still park there because they want to be there. Uh, and so doing that with a pricing scheme would be effective in parts of the community. Uh, doing that around event centers like the arena or places in Bricktown where you had event-based parking would help to balance that so that people weren't trying to find free parking around the, the event centers, but rather balancing into the off-street system. And again, I point to Bricktown as, as a place where today we could, we could set data-driven policies where we, we enforce or charge later into the evening to account for those demands. And we pitched this idea to the, to the districts in Bricktown, district board members, and they were, they were wholly on board with the concept because it meant that there was going to be better access to their businesses. Um, and so this is some of the uh, sets of, of solutions that we're looking at. And you'll see on the screen some specific recommendations related to pricing were in the city center, raise the price by 50 cents an hour, uh, largely because we saw most people trying to park on street rather than going into the garages. And so if we were to raise the price of on street, it would incentivize people to go into the garages and raise the occupancy in those facilities. And then again, those on-street facilities would likely still continue to fill up at a level that's generating revenue that then supports the program in the city. Um, Midtown and Automobile Alley, we are recommending that in certain places like Broadway Avenue, Class and Walker, where you've got nightlife or even daytime activity around restaurants uh, and destinations, implementing paid parking along with consistent enforcement as a means of improving turnover and access to those businesses. And again, Midtown and Automobile Alley were stakeholders in this process, and these ideas were born out of conversations with them. So uh, these are not us trying to, to generate revenue, but in response to what the stakeholders in those areas are looking for. And then I think the, the bolded sentence at the bottom is, is one of the more important. They should be evaluated annually and adjusted to encourage that balance. So we've given COTPA and the parking management system, a number of tools and performance metrics to evaluate, to look at how the system is performing as they roll out stages of the strategies and make adjustments as they go along. So uh, the final slide, just some of the primary recommendations and where they fall in the phasing. So in the short term, we're recommending implementing a mobile pay platform, which is already underway. Uh, we're implementing new paid parking areas, again, Midtown, Automobile Alley, demand-based pricing changes, city center, brick town, uh, modernizing and transitioning enforcement so that everything is, is moving in the direction that the district boards and stakeholders were looking for. Uh, in years one through four of the midterm, we're recommending creating and expanding that shared parking network, starting small, pilot testing, and then using that to leverage to get bigger. 
um, creating code changes in the city ordinance that support the idea of shared parking. So as developments are coming in, it incentivizes the concept of using shared parking rather than building their own parking and contributing to the overbuilt system in, in downtown. Um, as you get towards the end of those years, one through four, evaluating that benefit district concept likely needs to occur at the downtown level rather than at the granular level at the districts just because of the size and scale of the revenue, but that is something that needs to be further evaluated. And then again, looking at performance metrics annually. And then as we get past year four, um, expanding shared parking, uh, evaluating commercial and neighborhood parking policies. So as areas like Midtown get more dense, uh, there will be spillover into neighborhood areas. And so evaluating how you protect neighborhood parking and what that looks like. Uh, and then thinking about district-based mobility investment. So as we, as we continue to improve the density of downtown and, and the use of parking, then thinking about how we leverage mobility, uh, park and ride type options or connectivity between districts so that people don't feel the need to get in their car and drive less than a mile or two to get around the downtown. And then the lastly, considering modern mitigation or transportation demand management strategies. So again, right-sizing parking as development continues to occur in the places in downtown where you haven't had it before, making sure that they're doing it with the, with the recognition that they're building in an urban area, a highly walkable area, and they're not overbuilding parking, but rather contributing to a balanced parking, transportation, and mobility system. That is our study and, and the recommendations, and I'm happy to take any questions from the council. Any questions, Just David? A couple of comments. Um, in an effort to try to improve utilization of the current or existing parking, uh, just a personal opinion that uh, better signage may assist with that in terms of identifying what parking is available <coughs> to the public. And then secondly, uh, if it can be more uniform in that signage. And then finally, giving the uh, consumer the opportunity to see what the cost for that particular area uh, would be in terms of, of parking, especially short term, less than say three to four hours would be helpful. I think uh, some people are uh, just don't understand what they're getting into when they pull into a parking garage and are, uh, would prefer end up parking on the streets where they, <coughs> excuse me, might otherwise use that garage. Yeah, yes, sir, and just to respond to those, so, so <coughs> consistent branding and signage, uh, consistent with the city's wayfinding approach, as well as just a consistent look and feel for the parking system was one of the things that we recommended, and um, I'm happy to report I, I landed on Sunday, and one of the first things I saw when I got to downtown is that COTPA has already started putting up consistent signage like what you would have seen at Sheridan Walker at several of the other garages, and then the implementation of the mobile pay app for both on street and off street will allow people to understand prices. Um, so it's another place where they can get that information uh, so that they, they have that. But, but I, I wholeheartedly agree. And that should also apply to the shared parking system when you begin to get into that, that similar look and feel <coughs> so that people know what they're getting into. <clears throat> and I do want to say, since I am on COPTA's board, they, they've, the, the city owned parking uh, facilities have been working towards that. I just think the private facilities could also uh, improve their signage and, and cost structure at, in terms of uh, disclosing it to the public. Thank you. Give me kind of a historical perspective of how we got into the parking business, that being the city, uh, and um, should we be in the parking business and what's our future with parking as far as building private facilities? It sounds like at some point there was a need for us to be there and Day, that's that doesn't exist. Is that right? So I will do the best I can. Um, if, if either of my two colleagues, Jason or Corey, have have understanding of the history, first, uh, parking as a as a business was was largely born here. You know, the first parking meter in the world was 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 implemented here, at least in the U.S. Um, then between then and when we did the Corey Shore, I'm a little blank on on what your parking history is. But I will say this: I've worked in a lot of communities over the past 15 years who in the 70s and 80s didn't build parking, especially off-street parking, um, and they don't control the market. So, so there's a lot of private parking that um, they don't really have the ability to market, they don't have the ability to drive people into, they don't control price so they can balance it. 
And I see a lot of cities nowadays that wish they had not made that decision and that they at least had some control over it. And cities like Sacramento, who in response to the new Kings Arena when they built it downtown, created their shared public parking system, are amending that by getting into the parking business as a partner with the private sector. Um, and then there are cities like you know Seattle, where I worked, I mentioned them in the demand-based pricing. They raised their own street pricing up to $5 an hour in certain places in 2010 and were immediately met with the private sector raising off street prices. So it didn't do the intended effect of balancing and making better decisions. So I wholeheartedly believe that being in the parking business is, is a wise place to be as a city, especially a city that's growing rapidly because you are able to use that as an economic development tool and as a way to serve the community. Um, I, I don't want to see you in the parking business, you know, spending $25, $30 million to build a garage in Midtown uh, when it's only going to serve, you know, an area two to three blocks around it. When you build it at the convention center like you're doing now, there's a great purpose for that. But I would rather see you become a partner with the private sector to leverage underutilized space today as a, as a business uh, decision. Any other comments, questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much.